Today on the show, strategy plus action equals mastering sales for your personal brand. Great coaches and consultants like you have the ability to change people's lives and transform entire organizations. And your impact can often go far beyond the clients you work with. One of the reasons I love working with coaches and consultants is because of that ripple effect. This show is here to highlight your expertise and empower you with resources and new ideas to grow your business. Welcome to Strategy in Action. Elle Petrillo is on the show today, and I'm so excited to bring you this conversation. She is just wonderful, uh, amazing at sales and in her role at Brand Builders Group, evangelizing <laughs> the, the, the power um, that Brand Builders has in guiding people through this process of really developing their, their, their personal brand. And it's, you know, it's such a loaded word, right? Personal brand, influencer, all of that. And, you know, we instantly think vanity metrics and social media and everything. But their definition of personal brand is the digitization of your reputation. And I just love that because it's an instant clarification on how Brand Builders Group is helping. And she's one of the founding members and strategic growth director at Brand Builders Group. And she shares with us some really amazing insights into how to approach sales and really the eight major things that we need to have in place in order to have this robust sales system, even if we're a one person shop, right? And certainly as we grow and scale, but we need to have those things that we can track and measure so that we can adjust in our sales process. There's so many layers to this and I have just a wonderful time talking to Elle and I know you were gonna love this episode. Let's jump in. Elle Petrillo, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Jason, what's going on? Oh, you know, just recording a podcast here. Well, your hair's still holding up, so we're good. Oh, perfect. Perfect. That's all I that's all I needed to know. Uh, <laughs> seriously, I am just absolutely thrilled you're here uh, to talk through this this big subject and plenty of rabbit holes to go down with it as well, because not only are there are there plenty of things to have lined up for sales, um, but there's a big mental game with a lot of it too, especially as we talk about personal brand and <laughs> selling for that that's I find all fascinating and, and, and I'm so excited to, to dig in with you on this topic. Um, uh, with your role at, at brand builders, it's, and then your, your, your background in sales, you're just the, the perfect person to, to talk about this subject of, of really mastering sales for a personal brand. And, uh, I'm thrilled to, thrilled to dive in here and, and get into the meaty stuff, but I also want to get some background and give us some, you know, some context around how you came up through the, the sales side of things and what brand builders is all about and, and your role there and what you're, what you're rocking. Yeah. I, I always joke around, um, half serious, half joking is that sales chose me. I didn't actually choose sales. And so if, um, you ever looked at my LinkedIn or if anyone connects with me on LinkedIn, you'll kind of have a little bit of a background to me. Um, so ultimately, back in 2001, um, my dad passed away. Um, unexpectedly, it was seven days between my 14th birthday. And that day actually led me to a career in sales, um, which I haven't shared often. It's something I'm starting to share a lot more. Uh, it's probably the first time I've actually ever talked about it. So I, I had written about it, but not really talked about it. But when I lost my dad, um, my mom did this amazing, incredible job at making sure our lifestyle never changed. Um, and although the way we live didn't change, the way I actually thought about life did. Um, meaning like I, at that point, I was taught like anything can happen and you need to always be able to be in a position that you can rely on yourself. Right. Um, and so one career that I don't think any teenager ever dreams of as their dream career um, is sales. And so if I'm going to be transparent with anyone who's listening today is I was created for sales. Um, sales, like to be great at it, requires resiliency. It demands that you step outside of your comfort zone. Um, it expects you to take ownership of your actions. And so if you know anything about me, like those are all three things that really, really describe who I am. And so I would say like the story of my 
dad passing away is really a big part of how I ended up in a career that like ultimately you're in charge of and you can have all the success you want and you can have limited success if you want it. Um, but that's ultimately like what led me down that path. Uh -huh. Wow. That's, that's powerful. That's really interesting to, to have that, that connection point with such a, such a, tr a tragedy, but also, you know, how you processed that and took that in and what you took from the example your, your your mom set and getting you through that because it is it, it is powerful there's such a mental emotional game to business overall that wow. you know that i think is important to dig into but i think sales even more there's like owning the business and sales are probably the <laughs> at the top in that that it it can be such a a, a mental and emotional battle or just a, just navigating those worlds so much. Well, I truly uh, believe like you shouldn't own a business if you're not willing to sell. <laughs> like that there's, you have no business being in business if you're not willing to sell. Yeah. At some level, like even if it's, you know, day one, even if you start out funded, right? At some level, you're selling that business. If you're selling the idea of someone investing or whatever that is. And for most of us, it is, hey, let, let's bootstrap this thing. Let's get started. And no one is ever going to sell as good as you should be able to because no one's going to believe in your business as much as you do. And so if you don't have that nailed down, <laughs> how are you going to bring someone else in to be passionate and know what to do? Yeah. Do you mind if I share like a little mindset shift trick thing that I always like to share with our clients? No, oh, please. Uh, yeah. One of the things that I am really convicted in is if you believe that you are the best solution for this person, if you believe that you're, you are the one whose heart's in the best place, that you can serve them better than anyone else can, that you, like, there is no one better than you, right? Like, in what you do. There's no one better than what you do, than, um, uh, than you at what you do. If you do not try to sell someone, you're doing them a disservice. Because what I believe is that there's someone else who's not as good as you. However, they have more confidence than you. Uh, they have more sales skills than you. They might even have more passion than you. But um, they are not as good as you as what you at what you do but because they have i joked recently the balls and then someone reminded me that i don't have balls so i said the ovaries that uh because they don't have because you don't have the ones that they do like they're going to sell that person and that's really selfish on your end because it's going no if you really are the best person to help them like i don't believe there's anyone better than brand builders group at helping people build and monetize their personal brand and build something that they can scale um, than us, like truly. So I have no problem going toe to toe with any other program or idea or course or something that someone's going, well, I'm considering working with them. And it's like, I am happy to put my sales hat on and buckle down and double down on every single reason why we are the best fit for that person. Um, because if I don't, they're going to go with something else. And guess what? I believe in a year they're going to be coming back and going, I should have gone with you in the first place. Um, because I've seen it so many times, right? And so in that year, they probably wasted time and money and energy and resources that they didn't want to. And it was all because I, you know, if I did put my tail between my legs and I didn't have the confidence and whatever, um, they would have gone with someone else. And so it's really more of not focusing on yourself and really focusing on going, if I'm the best person to serve this person, I'm going to do everything I can to help them understand that. Yeah, I, that's so powerful. And I hope that that helps a lot of folks reframe that because so many of us, you know, have that that problem and we get caught up in, oh, how am I going to be perceived and feel salesy just be, because we've had a negative sales experience and we don't want to be that, right? We don't want to do that. But having that reframe is so powerful. I, I, I think that's so strong to go into it. And it's it's this better approach to sales that I've been fortunate to you know, surround myself with people like yourself who who have this mindset when it comes to sales. And it's it's really just helping people along the path with with solutions they need, <laughs> you know? And that's 
it's such a simplified way to look at it and it can be difficult to put into practice. But I think that mindset shift that you just described is is really empowering for well, folks. Also knowing like if I don't actually think we're the best fit, if I don't actually think we can truly help that person, I'm equally as okay and confident in saying, you know what, we're not a fit for you, right? Like that, we're not the best people to help you with that. Um, and let me recommend a few people that I think would be better for you. And so I think it, it balances it out. It's not that you're trying to sell every single person, but if you really believe you that you can help them, then you should. But if you're not the best person for them, you should also have the confidence to say that as well. Absolutely. And that energy yeah. comes out, right? Like, like even just having the, 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 the mindset and the, you know, the knowing that that's your true approach, that energy comes out, right? Because a lot of times it, it isn't about like believing in the product or, or, or not. It's about that other piece, person being a good fit, like you described, because that other person, they just may not be at the right point for brand builders. They not may not have this put together, or they may have different goals that don't align, or their approach doesn't align. And maybe there's a better solution, or maybe they need to go back to the drawing board a little bit. And when you just come at somebody with that energy of, hey, whatever, you know, <laughs> I'm going to lay it all out. Well, it's funny. It's huge. Like- Years ago, um, I had a call with this this guy and, you know, it wasn't a fit for him, but he ended up referring his best friend who was a client for over two years. And now the guy who we weren't a fit for now works with us. <laughs> so um, it's just like full circle. You just never know how this person will ever play back into your business or into your life. So if you just put the relationship first um, over the sale, then it, it will lead to, you never know, good things. Oh yeah, and as a side note to that, I can I can attest to the the power of brand builders and how fantastic they are. <laughs> Honestly, um, now we're we're gonna double up on you viewers, like uh, <laughs> invest in brand builders today. Uh, but but in all seriousness, like I can see firsthand why you would stand behind it and do everything it takes to get the right people into that group because everything is there from the beginning to eight figures and beyond. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, I just, I, I love that. Give, give people, cause I want to, I want to dig in a, a little bit around sales for a personal brand and, and and what goes into that. But just so people have a better context of what we're talking about with brand builders group, describe what that is and and that whole offering and system. Yeah. So are, are you mean what we do at Brand Builders? Is that what you're asking? Yes, exa- exactly. The whole shebang. Yeah. So we work with mission-driven um, messengers. And typically, the average person that we work with um, is an entrepreneur, a small business owner, um, usually in a service-based business. However, it doesn't have to be. And what I mean by that, it could be a service-based professional, like a financial advisor or attorney. It could be someone who's a coach or a consultant. It could be speakers authors, podcasters, um, but ultimately like that bread and butter is that service-based professional. Um, And so what we do with them is we help them become more well-known. At the end of the day, it's your reputation and either um, you're curating it or someone else's because everyone has one. And most people that I've interacted with over, over the years have put their entire career focused on their results. And so they've got an incredible result. They've built amazing businesses. Um, And then they get to the point of going, I'm really, really good. Why doesn't anyone know about me? I have a message to share. I want to help other people. I want to make massive impact and influence in this world. But no one knows who I am. And so that's the reach component that a lot of people in the past have put they think about reach as like your followers, your subscribers, your likes, right? Like that, and they think of it as like vanity metrics, but that's a a component because ultimately if someone doesn't know who you are and they don't know what you do, they cannot do business with you. Now, once they do know who you are, once they do know what you do, then the question is, well, do I like him or her or do I trust him or her? And you're not going to be able to spend quality time with every person that you who has come across you for them to decide if they like and trust you. And so that's where your personal brand digitizing. So to us, it's the digitization of your reputation, right? It's taking your reputation 
putting it online so people can see what you're about, right? They can decide, does this person align with my values? Does this person have something that I actually need? Do I feel like they get me? And do I feel like they can help me, right? And so that's ultimately what we help you curate is a system for, A, let's take your reputation, put it online, let's get really clear on who you're serving, what your message is, how you're serving them, what your offering is, right? And then making sure that we can capture and convert these people to become fans, followers, customers, clients. Um, and what that looks like is oftentimes people go, I, I want a podcast, right? Or I want to get on podcast, or I want to speak and be on stage. And that's a dream of mine. Um, or I, I have a book that I've always wanted to write and I don't know how to write it. I don't know how to launch it. Um, and so these are all the things that we help you do when it creates your customer journey of what does your personal brand actually look like? Like what are the mediums and met or ways that you're going to be getting your word out there or your message out there? So uh, we yeah. are not the ones that work with you if you want millions of followers because we believe you can make a million dollars without a million followers. Uh, we are not the ones that are, it's it's just about becoming Insta fame is like our clients are always like, I don't want to be uh, like an influencer. <laughs> it's like, well, do you want to influence people and help impact them? Then yeah, you do want to be an influencer, just not in the way of like, you're telling people where to shop. Um, so it's like, there's just this mind trash that people have around it. But when you start removing that and start looking at social media as one part of it and just a tool, just like you have a CRM system as a tool, just like you have uh, dashboards and ads as a tool, just like you have a website as a tool, social media is just another business tool. And if you can start looking at it as a tool in your business versus like this world of, you know, TikTokers, TikTokers, of TikTokers, excuse me, et cetera, and like remove that negative connotation you have with it then and be build this healthy relationship with it and see how it all works in strategy together. Um, I know that's a really long winded, an winded answer, but ultimately what we do is we help you create the strategy on how you're going to take your brand from being unknown to known. Yeah. And it, but it's a, it's a fantastic answer because the, the, the terms personal brand influencer, they're such loaded words that everybody brings their own connotation to. And I love that definition, the, you know, the digit, I can't say oh, it, but right. I love it. Digitization. The digitization yeah. of your reputation. There you go. Uh, and and I, I love that. And it's, it helps, I think the, the LinkedIn crowd, the B2B crowd, the professional crowd go, oh, okay. <laughs> now I can let that in. Right. Um, because that, that is, who you're go going after, you know, and who you're serving the the best. And I think it does, it carries over what so far beyond, oh, I want to write a book or speak on stage. It, those are great components and you can have those elements, but this goes so far beyond because it really does serve that coach, that consultant, even, you know, a business owner who's got, you know, this, this big company, yeah. if they can build up their authority in their industry. Here's how I'm taking the industry forward. If you can represent that, well, then it really does help overcome that challenge that I see all the time. I've been through that in the, in, in the past of going, yeah. I'm great. I, I, I do, I do wonderful things. I, not just, I think about it, but the clients who do find me in yeah. some way out there, they love what I do for them. I just need more. I just need yeah. to get in front of more. Or and these are, those are those things. I think that actually we were talking about this before. Um, more is one part of it, right? Um, but a lot of people are going, I need more. I need more who like more people, more leads, more, you know, whatever it might be. And it's not always about needing more. It's not always about who's next. Oftentimes it's what's next. And what I mean by that, it's doing more with who you currently have. And what you see is because you don't have systems in place, specifically, this is like where I'm really passionate about is the sales system, what will happen is you oftentimes are leaking a lot of leads and you're leaking a lot of opportunities. Um, so one of our clients that I worked with, um, he he said, working with you and brand builders was the best investment I made in 30 years. And he's a financial advisor. And this is an industry that has a lot of compliance still around social media. 
But what was so powerful for him was not just even getting clarity on who they're serving and like their ideal person and their message for it, but implementing funnels, implementing like a sales system and how to use a CRM to make sure they're not preventing leads and actually putting automation into their business to make things a lot easier for not just them and their internal team, but for their prospects and their clients. Um, and so like that idea of more, it's, it's switching it from more leads, more people to going, what more can we do with what we currently have that we're not maximizing? Yeah, that's huge. Because yeah. that, that really is it. And, and mo- it's like more from from me rather than more of them, right? <laughs> like, what can I do more f- from me? Put more content out, educate better, have more conversations, right? To lead to that. And I think that's, that's the, the, the perfect, you know, jump to really digging in here now when it comes to, to selling, you know, when you have this personal brand and you're, you're trying to develop it and it gets, it gets messy, right? Because, and I want to get into some, some tactics and how to help some, yeah. some people, but it also gets messy, even just a business owner, no matter what they do, <laughs> it's attaching, attaching the, oh, they said no to, they said no to me. Right. And then I imagine when you get into the personal brand side of things, trying to sell, like there's even more of a a mental tie. And I think it's so critical for that separation, right? Like, even though it's you, you as a speaker, you as an author, you as a coach to, to mentally separate those things in terms of what you do as that, the offer, right? They said no to the offer, not to me as a human being. How much of that? I want to speak to that. And this is what I'm so grateful at such a young age. Well, (laughs) this is embarrassing. Even when I was little, like I was always talking to myself. And my mom would be like, who are you talking to? I'm like, myself. (laughs) Embarrassing, but true. And, but what happened is over time and different experiences I had and different mentors I had, I learned the power of talking to yourself through affirmations. And so one of the ones that had gotten me through a lot of like, um, you probably don't know this, but like there were days I made a hundred cold calls. Um, I've knocked on, you know, thousands of doors and um, have made easily over 10,000 sales calls in my life. Um, and so like some of the things is always like some will, so some will, so what, who's next, right? Like if they're saying no, some will, some won't, so what, who's next? Um, and just like constantly reminding yourself, like every no leads you closer to a yes. And I, a yes is amazing and a no is great. A maybe freaking sucks. And so we just don't want a maybe. A yes is freaking yay, right? A no, like cool. There's more people out there that do want it. Um, and we just don't want a maybe. And if you're getting a lot of no's, well, then maybe we got to look at some other things. <laughs> but um, the the mindset of what you're saying to yourself in between each sales conversation can make or break your ability to um, grow your business as fast as you want it to be. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And let's help folks a little bit in that process, right? So the, the I'd love to know how you're working to, to, to not get that maybe and something that, that we can do to <laughs> avoid the maybes, um, be more decisive. And then also at what point, cause you mentioned if you get too many no's like, okay, there's, <laughs> and yeah. that's that's going to be you know fluid but then you know ha- when do you go in and go like okay i need to reassess here well there's a lot of ways to prevent maybes right like throughout the whole entire sales process and it's like what are you doing to prep them before i mean ultimately it's going are you screening people before you get on a call assuming that you're selling them through a call right then it's also going like what are you doing to prime them for that call and prepare them for that call or for that meeting Um, And then it's going, okay, in that conversation, like, are you asking, it's how are you structuring your sales conversation, ultimately closing, people think of, and I'm talking about a service-based business right now, Um, there's different types of businesses and different types of sales structures, but ultimately, people think of closing oftentimes as something that happens at the end, but closing is not an event, right? It's a series of questions throughout the whole entire process. So if you're asking closing questions throughout, you're either getting, um, Rory had shared this with me. Literally, I was like 22 years old. 
And he said, every time you ask a closing question throughout the process, you're either getting a green light to keep going, a red light of this is not a fit, or a yellow light of going, there's a possible objection here that we need to surface and bring up and talk through before we get to the end. Um, so there's there's a ton of that. And we we have a whole course on called Pressure Free Persuasion that teaches you how to have sales conversations. But a really simple tactic, like if you had to break this down, I'm not a salesperson, I don't know how to do this, it makes me uncomfortable, it's just to ask the question, what's holding you back? Right? What's holding you back? And let them share with you, is it time? Is it money? Is it spouse? Is it they're not, they don't understand how this works for them? Is it mm -hmm. that they're, you know, is there a lack of clarity? Is it not what they thought it was? And so it's like, if you just ask what's holding you back and can have a really open, honest conversation around that, that will help you overcome a maybe faster. Oh, yeah. And and really letting them talk, letting them get through it, because that's and that's such a key part of sales, too, is letting them fully answer <laughs> and not hearing, well, the time is kind of and then jumping in with your <laughs> rebuttal to that. Let, let them talk through it, get all this out and really really dig, right? You say like to basically what you're saying is like the question you ask is, is there anything else? And you just keep asking. It's like if you ever got in a fight with your significant other and they're just like, blah, 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 right? <laughs> and you're going before you even want to address what they just said, you want them to get it all out. So that way you're not throwing like 10 other things at you after you answer, right? And it's like, well, shoot, why don't you just tell me that from be the beginning versus like, now there's 10 more things that you're pissed off about. It's kind of the same thing here. It's just going, is there anything else? Like anything else holding you back? Anything else upsetting you? Y'all didn't know you're getting relationship advice today. Not like I'm qualified to give it, but it's like <laughs> just asking anything else till they get it all out. And then exactly what you said, then you can address it. Um, yes. And the in a, in a nice way, not like anything else. <laughs> also, like in a relationship, it's, it's how you deliver that as well. <laughs> well <laughs> Maybe it's a, uh, what, is there anything else to, that's, that's coming up for you, right? <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So then when do you, when do you find that time of, um, you know, I, I just can't get any traction here with this offer and what, I, what I'm doing? And then what do you kind of start with when you evaluate what you've got going and what you might need to change? I mean, the first part of every sales system, any entrepreneur should have in place for their business is tracking. It's knowing what are you tracking? And oftentimes what we do is we track the back end, but we don't always track the front end, meaning like how many leads came in, how many requests came in, right? How many actually set appointments um, or set a meeting. Again, this all depends on what your business structure is. Um, out of those, how many rescheduled, how many canceled last minute, how many no showed on you, right? Then it's looking at how many actually did run, how many went from a rant to like a follow-up call, or you closed them on the first one. How many, again, no showed or rescheduled the follow? It's like knowing your numbers every step of the way. So that way you can pinpoint where in the sales process is there a breakdown now, let's say you are running a bunch of meetings um, and you're getting a bunch of no's. Well, that's a good indicator that the problem is not setting the appointments. The problem is not leads. The problem is what the heck are you doing on that sales call? And then it could be anywhere from is your sales conversation structured where you really are building the relationship with them? Are you asking the right questions, not just to find a need, but allow them, make sure they understand the impact that need has on them? Um, are you presenting the offer in a way that ties their need to what you're offering, um, where they see you as the solution? Are you using stories and testimonials of other clients to reinforce like, hey, you're not the only one. This person had that too. We help them by doing this. So they're actually, their story is reinforcing that this is a good idea. And then are you even actually asking them to buy? <laughs> Like that is a big thing you see is some people just never ask that person for a decision or they leave the call with never setting the next appointment. Um, I actually went to dinner with a girlfriend last night and she's been meeting with a financial advisor who is a, a mutual friend and good friend of mine. And she's like, yeah, he wouldn't let me. She was talking about like how he has the sales tactic 
And she told me about it. I was like, no, that's not a sales tactic. And she, I was like, that's actually like honest and true. And I'm not going to share what it was. And then she said, well, he wouldn't let me leave the meeting until like we scheduled the next one. I'm like, well, that's a sales tactic and that's a good one. Um, <laughs> and so it's really funny how like people assume some things are sales tactics and others are not, but I can go on about that another day. Um, but ultimately then it's like a lot of people don't schedule the next call, which then puts you out of control of the situation. Yeah. And that's, that's the, yeah. And then you're in maybe land, right? And yeah. that's what we, <laughs> we want to avoid. And that's, and that's, and that's again, it's like you leak opportunities without meaning to there. Exactly. And it, there's a couple of things to that too. One is the, the, back to the mindset, right? Like you're in such a, you're terrified in the moment. You're in such a rush to just end the call and just, <laughs> you know, get out of it that, that, yeah, it sounds funny, but people often forget to, all right, let's let's move forward. And and the other person may have another objection. They may need more information. They may be ready to buy, and they're just not on their own going to go. You know, hey, how do I buy this from you? Sometimes they will, <laughs> but, but I mean, so much of this too is how convicted are you? Like, if you are really convicted that they should move forward, like they will feel that and buy into that. If you're not, they will also feel that and buy into that. So like whatever you're feeling about it will transfer over to them. Oh, yeah, big time. And something else you mentioned in there was the, this idea of the sales process. And that's such an important thing that I, I want to make sure we don't skim over because we aren't just talking about a phone call <laughs> that is a sales call at the end, right? Uh, there. That's why all of these things, and it blends in with marketing that leads to sales and gets them into that pipeline and creates a process. But that's why every step of this is so important, even for a personal brand, so that you can track it, so that you can line that out. How do you help people sort of start down that path of looking at the the, the full picture of and making sure they actually have a process? Yeah. Um, well, first off is identifying what is your current process right there ideally is something, but maybe not. Um, and then the other is just going like, what is your customer journey look like, right? What is, how are they coming in and learning about your business? Then what's happening? Then how are you actually, like, what is the offer, right? An online course and an online sale is completely different than an offline sale, meaning a conversation. Um, so usually the rule is if it's under $2,000, like you don't need a phone call for it. If it's more than two grand, you usually need a phone call. Now, some people won't agree with that. That's just the rule of thumb we go by. Um, so it's really looking at like overall, like with your offering and what you're selling, what does that process need to look like? What are the touch points? But, um, you know, here are eight things. Like if you're building, I like to call it eight figure sales system, right? These are eight things that you have to make sure you have in place. Now there's tons more, right? There's so many different other options when it comes to scaling your sales, but if you're just starting out and going, I actually have never really put a lot of time and attention here, um, you need to, A, make sure you have your tracking in place. Um, you need to know how are you generating these leads, right? Like, is this going to be through speaking, through podcasts, through social, through um, cold calling, through referrals, through past clients, through friends and family? Like, there's a bunch of different ways to generate leads. So how are you generating leads? We have to pay attention to. Um, then it's, how are you filtering these leads? Uh, so for us, we have an application. We didn't always have an application, um, but because we started doing these big affiliate launches, we realized like we need to have an application in place to filter out the leads and make sure they're going to the right places. So what is your filtering process? Um, what is your nurturing? And so this is kind of what I was talking about before, like how are you priming someone for the sale? Um, and as they're going through the sales process, what are they receiving to uh, increase their buy-in and increase their interest? And that's usually through like sales pipelines, meaning emails and texts. Um, then it's after nurturing, right? Then this is like actually the selling, right? The closing, the sales conversation, what is actually happening and how are you structuring uh, that sales conversation, which we talked about a couple minutes ago. Um, then it's going the more part, right? The upselling. What else could you be offering this person? What else could you be doing to help serve them more? Uh, this is oftentimes like someone will come to us to uh, build a brand and build their business. And then they go, you know, I, I do want to write this book, 
and um, you know, I need help with getting a ghostwriter. Like I can't write it myself. And so we have implementation partners, which is a revenue stream for us that we can share with you, which is another version of like an upsell or the next sale or what's next with that person, not who's next, what's next. Um, then it's referring. Uh, really, it's going, what is the process you have in place so people can easily refer business to you? And it's it's messy usually. Like uh, I will say today, like our referral process is not tight. It's still a little messy. Um, however, we have hired people. We are currently building new pages and trying to make this as easy as possible for our clients because we realize that the fastest way to grow is through our, our current clients. It's they're our sales force to help drive leads. And we have this really awesome referral process where uh, they can build an income stream themselves by doing it. Uh, and then the last part of this, of the eight, eight figure sales system is promoting. And what I mean by that, um, in our study that we did, which is the trends in personal branding, it's the first study, nationwide study ever done on personal branding. And so we conducted this study and what we found is testimonials is the number one reason why people will decide to work with you. And so the promoting part of this is going, what are you doing to capture testimonials and how are you using this in your business? And if there's one thing you want to do is get testimonials as much as possible, because that you can use for your sales pipelines, that you can use for social media, you can use it for your website, you can use it when you're out speaking. Um, but ultimately, how are you promoting yourself through your clients' success stories? So I would say if you're starting anywhere, it's like those are eight things that we have to make sure we systematize, get a process, and we're implementing and uh, we're fine tuning because that will impact your ability then to start scaling. Yeah, because every one of those two is exactly what you talked about on what's next, not who's next. Every one of those eight focuses you in on your systems and your current world, right? The people yeah. you're connected to and like, oh, wow, let, let me start tracking these referrals. Let me start tracking, you know, the, the the social post, the podcast I put out and start start thinking in those terms and all these hidden conversations start <laughs> popping up, right? Like, oh, I could talk to them about that. And I, I love the one you mentioned too of going outside your business in, in terms of, you know, revenue stream, meaning those str strategic partners who are a perfect fit for, for your client and, you know, and not being afraid to build that into your business rather than this loose sort of, oh, well, I'll refer you some folks and I'll refer you some folks. And we all know how that works out. It okay. doesn't, right? <laughs> and it may sound nice and altruistic and, oh yeah, then maybe they'll refer. But no, let's structure this because I want to make sure that if you send me something, I'm paying you some some dollars for that because then you're going to be focused and purposeful and vice versa. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I know upselling doesn't always mean you have to do more work. It can mean yeah. more money without doing more work um, if it's structured the right way. And it also, again, depends on what industry you're in. Like a financial service, like, again, they can't get um, financial kickbacks because of compliance. It wouldn't be ethical for them. And so, like, that's not an option, but there are other, other there are other opportunities there. Absolutely. So, so paint the picture for us for this, the, the perfect person who needs to reach out to L and say, brand builders is for me. I need, I need this. So what's, who, what are they going through right now? What, what stage are they in and, and who are yeah. they? Yeah. There's someone who wants to drive consistent quality leads to themselves of like who they really love to work with. Um, someone who wants to increase their impact in the world. They want more people to know who they are. They want to share a message and, um, you know, they're really on a mission. One of the things it's mission over money, right? Like making money is great because you need money to help make a difference oftentimes, but, um, you are so committed to your mission and you believe like what you're doing is helping people and that you want to generate revenue, right? Like bottom line and top line, you, you want to generate more revenue, so if like you're a business owner, entrepreneur, and that's, that's what you're looking for, like this is exactly what we help you do. If you are someone, and then the other part of this is going, you want to speak, you may or may not want a podcast, like 
you want uh, to write a book and that's that's part of your vision. Like we have done the book launches and have worked with people like and my let. do it. And so you're at this point of your life going, I've done the, the business part. I've I've done that. Now I have something to say and I have something to share. How do I get this out into the world? Um, and that's what we do at Brand Builders. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. Oh. This has it's been a phenomenal conversation. Oh, um, yeah. I love your your expertise and and how in depth you, you go with all of this. And I'm sure we could talk for another hour uh, <laughs> uh, on this subject alone. Uh, but I really appreciate you sharing this. How do people reach out and yeah. find more? If people want to set up a call, we do a complimentary call, um, 60 minutes with one of our strategists to really learn about like you, your business, your goals, um, really just a fun conversation. And oftentimes, regardless of if you decide to partner with us, you will walk away with a lot of clarity um, and at least an understanding of what the roadmap would look like for you. And so if you want to take advantage of one of those calls, it's freebrandcall.com forward slash L. So my name is E-L-L-E, freebrandcall.com forward slash L. And if you just want to connect with me and touch base with me, you can find me on LinkedIn at L Petrillo or Instagram at L Petrillo as well. So I appreciate it so much, Jason. Thank you so much for letting me share and nerd out on sales as it's, it's my passion. It's my genius. It's what I freaking love. So I just appreciate the time to talk about it. Oh, of course. And it all, all that shines through. So I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Catch you later. All righty. We'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for tuning in and being a part of this show. If you want help creating authority building video content or even a client generating show of your own, go to medialeadsco.com and let's connect. I'll talk to you soon on the next strategy and action.